friends! My name is Jasmine and I'm an illustrator and if you are new to my channel, well hello, nice to meet you. <sighs> to just keep it short for you here, I was invited to contribute a short comic into Comic Scene's annual publication. I've had about two months to create this comic and it is due in two days. How far along am I in this project? Well, it's six pages long. I'm not even done with page one, so. Safe to say I'm absolutely nowhere near being done with this. And I have two days to do this. Yay. So for today's video, we are going to go through the process of finishing this comic, hopefully by Monday. Now, why have I taken so long to tackle this project? Um, many reasons. I got a full-time job, so it has been very difficult to muster up the motivation and energy to tackle this project right after work. Now for today's video, I also want to focus on specifically how to make comics on Clip Studio Paint. And that's another reason why I've really been delaying on making this comic because I've been doing a lot of research of how to be as efficient as possible. If you are interested in making comics and using Clip Studio Paint, hopefully this will be helpful for you. So, um, I suppose we can get started. As you can see, I've already set up a comic file on Clip Studio Paint. Okay, now that we are inside Clip Studio Paint, the first thing you're going to notice is that the interface looks quite different. A couple of months ago, they came out with a huge update and they made the icons super sleek and modern, kind of similar to Photoshop. And some of us aren't too happy about it because one, Clip Studio isn't Photoshop, like why are they trying to make it look more like Photoshop when Photoshop sucks? Even these three tools look way too similar to each other. Now how this multi-page setup works is you'll have two separate windows in your main interface. The first window is going to contain all of your pages and then the second window is going to contain the actual page that you're working on. Luckily you can change the width of it because it kind of takes too much room and I don't really need it that much. The neat thing about Clip Studio Paint and why a lot of comic artists prefer this is because it has specific functions for comic making. One of them being is the capability to draw these panels and then anything you draw in that panel is active. Each panel is basically a little active window that you can work inside of. She got herself into that. Hey. Hey. I'd also like to point out the power of using the stabilization feature to get different types of line work. In this example, to get that smooth curve of the helmet, I had to increase the stabilization. Imagine if I had stayed at a low stabilization. But because of the very textured detailedness of chainmail, I wanted it to be extra bumpy. Now, I can't get that bumpy effect if I have the stabilization too high. You're fighting against the computer to try to get that bumpiness. So it's good to keep in mind that you have a lot of range of being able to capture different types of line work when you're using these tools efficiently. Once you've used it a lot, you start to be able to tell ahead how much stabilization is going to be required to get a certain type of look. It's really not something that exists in the real world. It's a purely digital feature.
it is 6 a.m. Sunday and uh, we are up. So the sooner we tackle this today, the sooner we get to finish. And the last page, I don't know what it's going to look like. So that is definitely the definition of winging it. And let me just say this, I don't, I don't, first of all, I don't procrastinate like this. It's just so many things have happened that have delayed me being able to complete this project. It just, it really just happened that way. As far as not even having the last page planned out, the thing is, when you're limited to just six pages of a submission, you really have to think of a complete story. You need to have a beginning and an end in six pages. And I frankly don't have a short story in mind. So that's why I've been sort of delaying on what the last page is going to look like because that would mean I'd have to have a conclusion. But there's really no conclusion when the scene is about Alice sleeping in the castle and the castle getting attacked. So I'm thinking for the last page adding some kind of humor with the knights joining Alice. So that's the game plan. Hopefully it'll go smoothly. To give you a visual idea of just what type of work we got going for today, these are all the thumbnails for the six pages, and as you can see, the sixth one is pretty much empty. And everything that's highlighted in pink are the pages I've already done but need editing, especially the pink highlighted areas. Coming into the coloring stage, this is the second challenging portion of this comic that has made me redo the comic so many times. Like, I think I've redone these pages 10 times by now, and it seriously is because I haven't found the coloring style that I've wanted to convey the story. All the other iterations embraced a more flat style coloring simply because of time efficiency. So if I'm making a comic, I want to find a way to color it that will not require so much time. I don't want to be coloring a digital painting to take hours and hours to color every single panel. So I realized recently, very very recently, that I needed to embrace textures at least. So if I can't paint with a more realistic style, at least I should try to add some kind of texturing in here because at the end of the day, a medieval world, there's textures everywhere. Nothing is completely smooth, not even the knight's armor. There's always going to be little bumps. So <laughs> and not considering textures in the comic really did a disservice in taking away that sense of much needed realism. So now that I've kind of figured that out, I'm embracing the textures and trying something different. I've never really worked with Clip Studio Paints, many watercolor brushes. And recently I bought one of their packs. So if you see me redo things over and over, it's just me trying to get more familiar with this new style that I have no idea what I'm doing, but it seems to be working. I do recommend their brush pack. It's very cheap to get a ton of different brushes, so if you're considering expanding your brush library on Clip Studio Paint, go ahead and just get them. It's totally worth it. Not only are a lot of these brushes from that brush pack, but the actual pencil that I'm using to draw the line work is from the extra brush pack, so no regrets. Now that we are on page four, let's talk about storytelling again because this page is another example of how you should really think about continuity because 
As both an artist and a writer, we're so into our story and trying to keep in mind so many different things at the same time, there will be things that might slip up. So this is a reminder to always keep in mind the point of view and make sure that it's logical. So for example, on page four, Alice has exited the castle tower and she's running over to the wall to look over and glance at where the fire arrows are coming from. In the original page, the first panel is just her standing outside the castle tower. Already the first panel doesn't match the drama that is happening. The fact that she's just standing is taking away the momentum of what we had built in the previous pages. And for page four to open up with just her standing outside the tower, it's just kind of, it kind of kills the action. So what I've changed is instead of her just standing, she's in the middle of running. That will re-emphasize that this is happening really fast. When we move on to panel number two, this is when we talk about point of view and how important it is to keep it consistent and logical. So in panel one, if she is running towards the right to look out the wall, why is it that in panel two, she's looking towards the left? If she is moving stage right, she should be looking stage right, just for the sake of fast reading comprehension. So what I'm going to do is flip the image and have her look the correct direction. The other thing I wanted to mention briefly about this page, one thing that I learned after already drawing this is that real medieval castle battlements are very tall. They're supposed to be as tall as humans because when you're being attacked by arrows, you want full protection. What you'll see in a lot of Hollywood castles is that the battlements are actually pretty short. In learning that, now I feel compelled to have to update how I illustrated the battlements. These are the kinds of decisions that you want to make as an artist, do you want to stay as close as possible to historical accuracy or do you want to fudge it a little bit for the sake of clarity? As a history nerd, it does bug me that the battlements here are not realistic, so I'd rather just try to find a way to make it work visually than, than do what Hollywood does best, which is lie.
believe I managed to finish it without having to do an all-nighter. You might have noticed you didn't see making all of the pages, and that is because you'll be able to read all of the pages in Comic Scenes Annual, which is coming out at the end of the year, and I'll be offering a few Girl Night themed rewards in it, so you should definitely check it out and support the project now so that you can get extra goodies and get to see not just my comic, but a lot of other indie comic artists. So I'll be putting the Kickstarter information down below. If you have any questions about my whole process, about the story, about historical medieval stuff, I love to talk about everything that I just listed, so let's have a discussion if you want. I'm ready. I'm gonna go crash on the couch because that was, I think, 16 hours of drawing. I guess I'll see you in the next video. Bye!